My name's uh, Professor Robin Daly. I'm the uh, Chair of Exercise and Ageing within the Centre for Physical Activity and Nutrition Research at Deakin University in Melbourne. What my presentation is highlighting is that nutrition plays a very important role in trying to attenuate um, inflammation. There's increasing evidence suggests that um, an increase in protein intake may reduce inflammatory markers. Uh, an increase in dairy and vitamin D might all play a role. Chronic low-grade inflammation is associated with many chronic diseases in older people and so we need to look at strategies of how we can attenuate or reduce inflammation for older people. And if we know we can reduce inflammation then we're likely to see benefits in terms of bone health, muscle, muscle health, muscle function which might then reduce you know, someone's risk of having a fall or fracture later on in life. It's really about lifestyle factors and how lifestyle factors can improve health outcomes and in particular I think maintaining obviously um, in adequate nutrition and regular exercise. But it's not any type of exercise um, that might be optimal for muscle health. So we know for example that uh, resistance training or strength training is very good for improving muscle strength um, and, and muscle mass in older people in particular. Um, but to get the maximal benefits, you need to ensure that you have adequate nutrition as well. And of the nutritional factors that are particularly important, protein plays a really important role. And we know that if you have a very low protein intake, your response to exercise, so the, the, the ability for exercise to improve muscle mass, is blunted substantially. So how much protein do we actually need throughout our life and does it vary throughout life is, is a very interesting question. And I think what we're showing is you probably need more protein uh, later on in life to get the same benefits as in younger life. That's what the research would actually sh show us because the ability to, uh, or this balance between, we have this balance between muscle protein synthesis, that's building muscle and muscle protein breakdown. And what happens as we get older, the ability to build protein actually is less as we get older. And it's only when you have an increase in your protein intake that you basically match a younger person in terms of your ability to build protein or, or what we have called muscle protein synthesis. So optimising protein intake to a given level appears to enhance muscle health, muscle health in particular. And some of our previous research shows that if you do exercise and you increase your protein intake around about to a level of around about 1.3 grams per kilogram body weight, you can get a much bigger increase in your muscle mass um, compared to if you have a much lower protein intake. So. It's, it's, it's a, there's a more and more research coming out suggesting that where we are currently at with the recommended dietary intakes for protein for older people might actually be suboptimal and it might need, we need to recommend older adults to have a higher protein intake um, and to, to, to really improve their um, protein intake to ensure that it enhances their, um, their muscle responses with exercise or, or even just uh, having protein alone. So, um, in addition to, to um, protein, obviously maintaining adequate vitamin D levels and there's more and more research suggesting that um, we need to increase our vitamin D levels in our bloodstream to somewhere between 50 to 75 nanomoles per litre to really have the optimal benefits for muscle and bone health as well. And it's not diet alone, it's not exercise alone, it's the combination. So, and, and the prescription for exercise or for resistance training um, is really strong in terms of its benefits for older people and you know, it beats going for a walk or aerobic exercise. So um, that's why a lot of our work is around you know, strengthening exercise but with functional outcomes as well. We generally find that it is beneficial for pretty much all health conditions, resistance training. Um, and what the current guidelines would suggest, you need to do it probably at least two to three times per week. Uh, and that's part of the current guidelines for older adults to get the maximal benefits. And we've certainly shown a lot of research showing you get very large increases in muscle um, strength in particular, even in people who are 90 plus years. If they do resistance training, they'll get a 100% increase in their muscle strength. Um, but yeah, certainly is it good for improving bone density. Um, it's good for improving, as we said, muscle mass and strength. It's good for people with type 2 diabetes because it can lower their blood glucose levels. So um, it really is a, and that's why it's part of the guidelines, one of the most effective forms of exercise for slowing age-related muscle deterioration. So a lot of our research we actually do within the community and we work with people, for example, in retirement villages or nursing homes, so forth, to try to change practice about their dietary habits. And so some of our work in retirement villages, for example, we're encouraging older people to have more regular serves of lean red meat to try to increase their protein intake, um, which then might have benefits in terms of their muscle and function and other, other health outcomes. So um, I guess what we're trying to do is 
develop really strong evidence from clinical intervention trials, so the highest quality trial we can actually do possible, which will then inform policy and practice. So if we can get a really good randomised controlled trial, which is strictly controlled, it's gonna, we know that the results um, are not biased, um, and then we can actually then go to the policy makers or you know, contribute to dietary guidelines to say, okay, well maybe older adults should be having more protein or they should be doing this type of exercise or having a balanced diet which includes protein, you know, uh, vitamin D, calcium and, and various other things. So it is a real challenge to try to implement and it does take time um, to actually implement change. But I guess with the strength of the evidence of more and more studies coming on board to show, for example, protein is really beneficial for older people, then hopefully we can implement change and, and get a change perhaps in the dietary guidelines.